So good afternoon everyone. Welcome to today's Creditor Watch webinar, Credit Management 101. My name is Patrick Coughlin and I'll be your presenter today. I'm the Commercial Director at Creditor Watch, responsible for a few things, uh, primarily sales, marketing, as well as some product development as well. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you'd like to. So before we get started, just a, a couple of housekeeping things. Um, one, you'll see within the GoToWebinar toolbar that appears on uh, generally on the right-hand side, there'll be a question box. So if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask along the way, please do so. We've got some staff standing by who will um, endeavor to respond as we go. Uh, if we don't get to everyone's questions, however, or if it's... Uh, you know, if you ask a question that, that requires a phone call, uh, we'll give you a buzz uh, later on this afternoon or tomorrow, um, but be sure that we'll get through to everyone's questions. Um, a copy of the slides that I'm showing now and also a webinar recording will be sent to you uh, in the next 24, 48 hours, sorry. Um, so that way you can uh, keep it on file or if you have to leave, you know, before the end, you can catch up or by all means, please feel free to share it with any colleagues. Um, or friends as well. So what I want to do, I want to run a quick poll which is titled, what sort of credit management process do you have in place? Um, I just want to get a bit of an idea as to what everyone does um, from a credit management process at the moment. So if you could please just click on one or more of the following there. So you'll see a written process. So you've got something that's written down that either yourself or you know, a credit manager, accounts receivable manager follows. Might be a written process that's sort of loosely followed. Um, do you use any automated tools out there like um, Creditor Watch, um, IODM, Easy Collect? There's a number of you know, automated accounts receivable tools that you could take advantage of. Um, is the process more of a mental process? It's reactive, so you you kind of know. Oh, okay. Well, on the fifteenth, I generally you know send my statements, and then I will uh, chase when it gets to sort of sixty days overdue, for instance. Or do you not have any process at all? All right, I'll give you another couple of seconds to get in there, and then I'll close it off, and we'll have a look at the results. All right, so looking, looking at the results, it's, this is fairly consistent with what we see amongst um, you know, the market, our, our customers that we often survey and whatnot. So we're seeing a fairly good spread there. Look, 50% of you have, a, over 50% have a written process. Some of you obviously following it fairly strictly, others you know, a little bit looser. Um, automated tools being used, mental process reactive. So this is, I guess today, more so than any of those other groups, hopefully you guys, that portion of it, get something out of it. It's really, really key to have something. Look, I would write it down. It takes, it takes you know, 10, 15 minutes after this webinar to, to write down a credit management process. Um, and we'll go through it in a little bit more detail, obviously, what the basics are and what you should be doing. But it really does help because often, you know, we see a lot of customers who have they're receivable sitting in, you know, 60, 90, 90 days overdue. And that's, you know, that's, that's cash flow that's being completely wasted there. And, and with a few, you know, regular techniques that you introduce, you should be able to start seeing the majority of your, um, your receivable sitting in that current or 30-day uh, bucket, so to speak. So what are we going to cover today? We'll, uh, we'll look at what, who is Creditor Watch, a little bit about Creditor Watch quickly. Um, I know plenty of you are customers, some of you are you know, probably receiving our emails already, so you, I won't spend too much time on this. We'll have a look at our um, quarterly small business risk review. So we've done um, two or three of these now, so we'll look at Q4 from last year, and that compares against you know, generally Q4 the year before. Um, we'll run another quick poll, I promise that'll be the last one. And we'll look at what we've titled the six RE, six Re's of credit management. So it's a little infographic document that we've created. Uh, you'll be able to download it as well if you'd like once we send through the slides. And it's a really good way to 
um, get into a, a, a good process of credit management, making sure you're doing the right things uh, at the right times. We'll then look at how we can put um, that particular document into practice. And I'll give you a bit of a Creditor Watch demo so we can have a look at some of the tools that Creditor Watch offers um, in order to assist with your credit management, your accounts receivable process. And as always, q and I'll leave that open at the end. So if anyone does have questions at the end, they can keep adding their questions so they don't miss anything as we go through the, the, uh, the presentation itself. So a little bit about Creditor Watch. We're Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau. Um, we've now got well over 40,000 customers across Australia using us. And that's really, um, used, we're used by businesses of all sizes, um, from sole traders who are you know, operating out of their, their home, their second bedroom garage, all the way through to, to, through to public companies. I think we've got about, um, we've got over 150 of the top ASX 200 customers using us at the moment. Um, but at the same time, we've got, you know, 30 odd thousand small businesses using us as well. So for a small business, we're really a virtual accounts receivable manager. So you might have a dedicated employee in that position, you might not. Creditor Watch is definitely something that can be used by any small business that is offering credit terms to other businesses. Um, we're also view ourselves very much as a technology company. So as part of that you know, technology angle, we're always on the lookout for new data sources at the moment. We're pulling data from the likes of ASIC, the ATO, um, Australian Business Register, courts, debt collectors, our Creditor Watch customers, both big and small, um, and, and plenty more. Those of you who do use Creditor Watch, you'll um, obviously have seen all that data that comes in to help with making you know, credit decisions. So let's have a look at what we found in our latest small business risk review. So we saw a 67% increase in the number of Creditor Watch defaults that were registered in Q4 2016 versus 2015. The average value of a Creditor Watch default has risen over, six, over 76% in the past 12 months. So those debts are getting bigger. Um, we're also seeing that if a entity has a default registered against them on Creditor Watch, they've got a 46% chance of failing within 12 months. So the, what that means is, for instance, if you were using Creditor Watch for your monitoring and alerts, and uh, one of your customers received an alert saying that there's a, a, um, a Creditor Watch payment default registered against them by another Creditor Watch member, you'd know that that, that particular entity has a 46% chance of failing in the next 12 months, which, which is a huge, huge concern that you should be worried about. And when I say failing, it means going into administration, um, being wound up, becoming deregistered, um, or if you're dealing with a sole trader or a partnership, ultimately that, uh, that entity becoming cancelled. Uh, for those of you in WA or dealing with any businesses in WA, there's been a huge increase in the number of court actions um, 113%. So they're obviously doing it very tough over there. And there's that real roll on effect from the downturn in the mining boom. Something else to look out for is that a director with a previously failed company is two and a half times more likely to fail again. So when looking through credit reports, you know, have a look at the directors. Do they have any other companies that they're involved in or previously been involved in that, you know, have gone into administration, deregistered? Um, or had significant adverse against them. So again, you'll be able to download this risk review um, when we provide the slides, but let's just have a quick look at it now. You'll see it's a nice infographic that lays everything out in a fairly easy to consume um, format. It goes through defaults, court judgments, some payment trends as well. So that looks at how do small businesses get paid versus corporates? Um, you can see that small businesses are always paid a lot slower than corporates. And also there's a little section on unincorporated entities. So that looks at the, uh, the increase in the number of unincorporated entities that have canceled. And an unincorporated entity is a sole trader trust or partnership. So, you know, typically if you're dealing with small businesses, very important to keep an eye on. So back to the slides, I'm going to run our second poll now, which is, 
do you have a dedicated employee responsible for credit and accounts receivable? So other than yourself, obviously, if you're the owner. So yes, I've got a team. Yes, I've got a single employee. Or no, I don't have a dedicated one. There's obviously no wrong answers here. It's just good to get an idea of how everyone operates. So a lot of small businesses, obviously the, uh, the owner manager does the um, collections or the, the accounts receivable after hours or on the weekend or their partner does, helps out. Potentially you've got a bookkeeper. Um, that's probably another option I should have popped in there. Um, if, you, if you don't have a bookkeeper, sorry, if you do have a bookkeeper, maybe just pop in yes, single employee. That's the way we'll uh, get a better idea. All right, most of you have voted now. If you haven't, click really quickly. So what we're seeing is, yep, vast majority of you have some sort of um, employee or team in place for your credit and accounts receivables. That's great. Um, there is a quarter of you that don't. So I'm assuming that you're probably doing that yourselves um, or you know, your partner or something like that on the weekend. It may not be the priority that it needs to be or it should be. Um, and again, I think you guys will get a lot out of this, uh, this webinar and particularly the, the six rays of uh, credit management. So having a quick look at these six rays of credit management, we've got a, a summarized version here and then obviously that the infographic that you'll be able to access later on and I'll give you a quick glimpse of that as well so you know exactly what to look out for. So number one, research the credit history of all new customers. You always want to start off by knowing who are you trading with? Who is this company that's come to you that wants you know, to either buy goods or services from you that you're going to invoice? How do you know they're going to be able to pay their bill? So a credit report is going to highlight any adverse information to help you make an informed decision, which is ultimately going to safeguard your cash flow and minimize bad debt. Number two, you want to remind your debtors for prompt payment and you want to do that regularly. This is where I say having a written policy in place is really good, whether it's yourself, um, you know, running the running the accounts receivable process or you have a, an employee or a team, having that specific time frame in which they're sending out invoices, statements, reminder calls, reminder emails. At what point do you get when you send a letter of demand and at what point do you get when you start to consider registering a default. So following up with timely reminders will encourage prompt payment. Um, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, as we always say here at Creditor Watch. So try emailing um, a reminder the day before something falls due, sending a statement um, maybe after seven days, and then following up with a phone call after 14. The longer you leave it, the harder it is, and it's just wasted, wasted cash flow. Um, ensure that you know the invoice that you provide is, is provided on delivery and ensure all the details um, are correct of both your company but also the, uh, the debtor, the company, the customer that you're dealing with. Number three, you want to review their activity regularly. So a customer's, um, I guess, positive credit history. So if you have run a credit report on them, up front when they came to you in the first place, it's not always going to remain the same. So what you want to do is on top of obviously keeping an eye on their payment terms and how they're paying you, you know, they might pay you regularly at 30 or 45 days. Um, and if that starts to, you know, wriggle out, then you obviously want to get in touch with them and find out what's going on to try to get them back into that normal routine. But some, some other things you can take advantage of is um, customer monitoring and alerts. So, so what that means is you could load up your, uh, your debtors list, your customer list, and what Creditor Watch would do is we'd send you email alerts when important changes occur. So if a, if a customer gets into, goes into administration, has a default registered against them or a court action, something like that, we'll actually send you a, uh, an email alert so you can be made aware of it you know, as soon as it happens. And then um, obviously the next one is react to that particular change. So when, that, when a change um, occurs and it's brought to your attention, you want to act on that 
immediately. Um, regardless of whether it's you know payment terms blowing out or a, a court judgment or a payment default, you want to get in touch with the customer, see how they're tracking, um, see how they're tracking financially. Um, maybe visit their warehouse or their you know their their their, their place of business. Are they still in business? Is there is there plenty of foot traffic? That sort of thing. So all of these things really come together to help um, paint a picture of, of their credit worthiness. And if things start to look a bit iffy or there's alerts coming through, that's when you've got to consider, you know, revising revising their credit terms. Uh, maybe you put them on stop, maybe you put them on COD. Potentially you need to start looking at, you know, taking them to court for, for more overdue invoices and or registering defaults against them. So number five, recover. So what you want to do is be sure to let slow and non-payers know that you take your debt seriously. Displaying, um, for instance, a Creditor Watch membership logo on your invoices and statements is a really powerful tool to ensure that your invoice is at the top of the pile when it comes to your customers paying you know, all of the invoices that are sitting on their table. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to have a, a dedicated letter of demand that you can send out at a certain point. So that could be that it's you know, 45 or 60 days overdue. You want to, you want to remain consistent with that. Um, and all of this coming together will help increase the chance of actually getting paid on time and also eliminating bad debt or potential bad debt. The last one here is number six, register a default. So you've sent, you know, you've, you've sent statements, you've called, you've emailed, you've sent a, a letter of demand explaining, hey, if you don't pay your bill, we're going to register a default against you. It's now got to the point of no return where it's a really good idea to register a default against them. Ultimately, a default is a black mark that gets added, added to a debtor's credit report. Um, that allows others to view it. It will affect their uh, their credit rating, and anyone monitoring that particular company will receive an alert that 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 that, that debtor is a uh, you know is a slow payer or non payer. Um, that all of that combined puts pressure on that particular customer to actually come back to you and pay their bill or settle their bill, because they're more than likely going to get phone calls from other from their other suppliers, um, and or even get knocked back for credit. By other suppliers as well, so it puts a, a, a lot of pressure on them, and it's really good leverage to be able to access, uh, to be able to do that against a, uh, a non-paying customer. So let's just have a quick look at that infographic. Again, you'll be able to access this within uh, the slides when we send them through. So it's a perfect sort of thing that you can just print out and have next to you or next to your, you know, your um, your credit manager, your accounts receivable officer, for instance on their desk so they always know what to look for and they keep on that, they keep on track. So I guess the next step is to jump into Credit Watch and have a look at what tools we provide that can assist with this process. So we want to put it into practice. So we're going to look at how to run a credit report and what to look for in a credit report to identify are they good, are they bad how monitoring and alerts work, and also look at a couple of the collection tools, particularly the, the letter of demand template that, that we give you access to. So this is your Creditor Watch dashboard for those customers of ours. You'll, you'll obviously have seen this before. Um, for those who are not yet customers, hopefully you join us afterwards for a, for a trial to, to see if it can help your business. This is your dashboard and ultimately, it's where you want to um, start start in terms of running a credit check, um, having a look at you know current customers that you're monitoring, um, having a look at any statistics that we provide, so you can see you know your watch list is um, is a list of all the customers that you're monitoring. So for instance, you might have a limit of of um, a hundred, and you can see that you know I'm only using thirty five percent of it. We also identify all of those customers that you're dealing with that do have negative data against them already. So that's a really good way to, to start off and, and go, okay, well, I always thought these guys were good, but it turns out I've got a number of dodgy looking customers uh, on my books already. Um, a bit more automation that we provide is we actually integrate with Zero and MYOB. Um, so that further automates your um, accounts receivable process. 
every time you add a new customer to Zero or your MYB account, we'll actually proactively email you a, um, a credit report and also add them to the monitoring list for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a credit check. So I'm going to use one that I've used before, Denim Constructions. So this is actually a real company. Um, you can see you can search by business name or ABN or ACN and it comes up with a list of search results. So I know this is the one I want to use. It's got a red triangle with the exclamation mark. So it lets me know that there's negative information against this particular company and they're under external administration. So this is the credit report that we hold on Denim Constructions. What you're gonna see here is what we call widgets. So straight away, we wanna be able to tell you if these guys are good or in this case, bad. So you can see under external administration, seven payment defaults, 14 court actions, an insolvency notice. There's two mercantile inquiries, which are debt collection notices. So there's a debt collector after them. Um, there's critical ASIC documents. So they relate to, to winding up administration and also cross directorships. So remember I spoke to you about directors that have um, had other companies that have failed are a lot more likely. I think it was two and a half times more likely to, to fail again. So this is actually flagging 17 other companies that this director is a director of that's had a poor, um, a poor history and a poor credit history at that. Big red risk alert box lets you know that, hey, there's uh, under external administration and multiple um, risk factors against this particular company. So all of this information you would see is the same information you're gonna see for every company that you, uh, you search for. You're going to see the ABR information, which is Australian Business Register, information on the ABN, when it was registered, is it registered for GST, um, ASIC data, so we can see the status, uh, when the registration date was, so back in 1999, that sort of thing. Credit score, I won't go into this, I'll save this for another webinar, but it's just providing a, uh, a consistent um, way of you to assess the credit worthiness of a, uh, an entity will actually help you out there by providing a trading recommendation and also showing you a 12 month historical trend. So you can see are they going up or are they going down? Payment predictor, we don't provide these on companies in administration because typically they're not paying anyone's bills by that stage, but this will give you a better understanding of how they're paying everyone else. That information is obviously coming through from Zero MYV. Um, and a number of companies provide their age trial balance, their receivables every month. So we consolidate all that information and provide you back with a number that says, this company pays on average 12 days overdue. So running through the risk data, pretty quick here, it's pretty straightforward. You can see 14 court actions. So we tell you when the court action occurred, who was the plaintiff, um, and also the most important things, how much. So you can see, there's plenty of court actions here for varying amounts from single digit thousands up to, you know, 40 odd thousand there. The next one we see are payment defaults. So these are registered by Creditor Watch customers. You can see when they were added, when the actual invoice was due, um, who it was submitted by. So that's the Creditor Watch customer and also the amount. The status here, you'll see current, which means it's currently outstanding, has been part paid or the third one is uh, settled, which means that that particular customer, that debtor ended up paying the bill after a default was registered. Insolvency notices. This comes from the ASIC insolvency notices register. Um, in this case, we can see there's a winding up order. So you can see that um, James LeMann is the petitioning creditors legal representative. Um, we can see when the hearing is taking place and exactly where, so that was August last year. Plaintiff's details as well, so you can make contact with them potentially to um, you know, join the winding up or if this was an administration, you'd be able to see the administrator's contact details. So please note that everything I'm showing you here, if you were monitoring this particular 
entity, this particular company, you'd actually receive an email alert for each of these things as they occurred. Mercantile footprints, so this particular debt collection agent has been after them a couple of times and has left um, you know, mercantile inquiry against them, so that's like a debt collection notice. Critical ASIC documents are all the documents relating to the winding up and administration. And then we start to get into who the director is, um, a little bit of the ASIC information that comes through from an ASIC extract. So really important to know who the, um, the directors are of the companies that you're about to go into business with. In this case, we can see that the director and secretary is Stephen James McGrath. We can see when he was born, where he was born, how long has he been in that role for. Um, we can even have a look at where his um, office or home is located. Play with Street View as well to have a bit of a closer look. And a new feature we recently launched is actually a LinkedIn icon here. So that links through to the search results within LinkedIn to take you through so you can have a look at um, their LinkedIn profile. These other three here, obviously the uh, petitioning court um, representatives and also the appointed liquidator and receiver manager. Cross directorship, so we can see Stephen's the director of a number of companies um, and we also know that a number of them are either in administration or they have adverse against them. So this particular company that we're looking at might be clean, but then we see that there's all these adverse cross directorships. What you would do is be able to jump in and have a look at all these other credit reports as well. And the last two things, obviously the company address. So is the company address as registered with ASIC matching what they've provided on their credit application for instance, and also share capital if you wanted to see what sort of ownership that particular um, director may have or is it owned by another company. So that's really running a credit report. The next thing is the customer monitoring and alert. So what we see here is our watch list. So these are all the companies that I'm monitoring for changes. By monitoring these companies, you receive an email alert when a change occurs. So this is what it would look like. So in this case, you receive a single alert every day with any changes that have occurred. So I can see that a number of changes have occurred to a few customers I'm monitoring. There's been insolvency notices lodged against these two. There's been a payment default lodged against Blue Monkey and a court judgment against TPA Packaging. So what I can do, I can just click view and it would take me straight through to that particular court action and that particular um, credit report. So I could have another look at this customer to see exactly what's going on. So in this case, only the single court action. Similarly, you could click on the others and they take you through to the various um, risk alerts that have, have occurred. So whether you've got you know five or 5,000 customers, it's really difficult or virtually impossible to know what is going on with them at all times. You know, it's, you, you can't be expected to, you know, monitor the courts, have a look at ASIC, the Australian Business Register, um, you know, day to day to see if any negative information has been lodged against them. So that's where the monitoring and alerts comes in really handy. The third part of a uh, Credit Watch account is the debt collection tools. And as I said, you can add things like the membership logo to your invoices and statements. We've got a couple of templates here for actually chasing up overdue debts. So a reminder notice, which is a, a more gentle reminder that payment is due, and then your final notice or your letter of demand. And that's a little bit more forceful when you've got to the point of um, going, you know what, enough's enough. I need this paid now or we're going to court. So we can have a look at that particular template. You can see Fairly strong word, wording here. Failure to comply will result in this account being listed with our credit reporting agency, Creditor Watch. If listed, the default will be visible on your credit file for five years. May adversely affect your ability to gain credit in the future with other suppliers. This, um, this type of document is going to get the attention of most debtors who owe you money. There's always going to be those that are incapable of paying or simply won't pay because they believe that they can get away with it. 
but this is definitely going to pick up a majority of those customers. The third and final debt collection piece is obviously registering a default. Very, very straightforward to do. Click register a default and all you have to do is follow the prompts. Payment, due date, amount, has it been disputed? Has part payment been received? Really straightforward there. So look, just want to recap this before I wrap up. I'm sure plenty of you have got to get back to work or you want to go and have something to eat. So we've got the six REs recap here. Research, remind, review, react, recover and register. So research the credit history of all new customers and remind them for prompt payment. Review their activity regularly so that you can react to important changes to recover bad debt. And when you cannot ret retrieve payment, register a default. So that about does us for today. Um, thanks very much for attending. If you've got any questions, please get in contact with us. Um, you can call us 02 2025 um, or you can email us as well, sales underscore admins at creditorwatch.com.au. Um, if you're interested in trialing Creditor Watch for free, please get in contact with us and we can set up an account for you to have a go. Um, if you find that it's you know worthwhile, then obviously you'll just continue along. If not, we can just cancel it for you really straightforward. We do have some other upcoming webinars as well. So feel free to check in on this, um, this link. We'll also send you emails when they are coming around. The next one, for those of you probably more relevant to those of you who are already customers of Creditor Watch or potentially previous customers, um, it'll be titled Getting the Most Out of Your Creditor Watch Account. So we'll really dive into exactly how to use it and how to make sure that you are um, getting the most out of you know, all the features that we provide. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask away. I'll leave this open for another couple of um, minutes. Don't be shy, ask away. If we don't get back to you on the live chat, um, I will send through uh, responses to those questions at a later date. Thank you all very much.